Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, all good. All good, all good. So, Mr. BC, welcome to your interview. Before Thank you. before we start, for those of you who don't know me, um, my name is Vortex. I've been uh, playing AOE4 and creating content for AOE4 for a year now. And among that content and, and, and those things that we've been doing throughout the year, uh, one of the things that we've done is interviewing pro players. Um, so we've interviewed Marine Lord, we've interviewed uh, Mista, uh, Lucy from Vortex, and we never got the chance to actually interview Bistian. And, and it was one of the those interviews that I was very excited about. Um, and I feel this moment is a very good one uh, because it's been a great year for you, Bistian, and we will talk about it uh, now, uh, later. But also because, and, and I'm sure that um, big chunk of the chat uh, agrees with me here or feels like me. Uh, you may not know this PC, but when I first st started playing AOE4, uh, I went on on Twitch, you know, just to see who's uh, who was streaming and if it was a thing or not AOE4, if I could actually stream it or not. And I came across your uh, your stream. Uh, well, from that point on, man, I've been watching your stream. If I couldn't catch you live, I would watch you when going to sleep. You know, I would go and review the VOD, and in some way. To some extent, you've been some sort of like a teacher to me, like a mentor to me. Although you know, although you know, you may not know, but um, I think many people feel like this, feel that way, and that's also a reason why I felt very excited to have you here. Not only because of your personal success uh, throughout the year, but also because uh, of my, my like personal uh, how to put it, feelings towards you. Right now, mm -hmm. welcome, Beastie. Thank you. Well, uh, I'm I'm glad to hear that. That's pretty that's pretty cool. Because uh, you know it starts one way and then it, it ends in a way where now we're doing the interview, right? So, uh, regarding me not being here, you know, not being interviewed yet, that's my fault. Uh, sometimes I'm uh, complicated to get a hold to, but we finally got it. We finally managed to to sort it out. So uh, I'm excited to do it. Yeah, and it, and it, again, it's a very good. I think it's a very good time. Like we're finishing the year. Uh, with a huge, like, tremendous subathon that you had, uh, being the winner of the last tournament, we will talk about the tournament. Um, so a lot of personal success. But before we jump into all that stuff, uh, more like professional stuff, I want to know a bit more about you, Bisti. Where does Bisti come from? Like, where were you born? Tell me about you. Uh, so I'm born in uh, born in Serbia in a city called Niš. Um, I had a pretty I would say, you know, normal, average upbringing. Um, you know, had a lot of hobbies as I was growing up. I was very, very outgoing. I wanted to be a football player. Then uh, at some point I had really good uh, uh, aspiration to be chess player, actually. And um, fun fact about that, I was doing really well. And one of my, uh, one of my relatives is uh, very successful in chess. Mm -hmm. uh, he passed away a long time ago, but at the time, uh, he, I was basically like six or seven years old, and he was putting me to play against kids that were 12, 13, and I was winning, and he told my mom, you know, he's very talented for chess, and maybe you should bring him to the, the school that we have so I can, you know, I will coach him. So the moment I heard that, and I love playing chess, but the moment I heard that, I was like... I'm not, I'm not playing chess I'm ever not again. <laughs> chess wasn't cool, you know, like it wasn't a cool thing. And I was like, I'm not going to go there and play chess. Like, who does that? You know, I want to be a football player. So I actually stopped playing chess, like, almost immediately for years because of that. And, uh, I mean, now I regret it. You know, I, w I wish I kept doing it. But, you know, you, it is what it is. You think you would have been a more successful chess player than uh, RTS player? I mean, it, it's, you know, it, it's hard to say, but... If, if I had a, another shot at life, you know, to just redo everything, I would probably go along that path and, you know, just see how well I could do. Because I did find chess very interesting and I still do. I just don't have, you know, the time to commit to, like, actually properly learn it. But, uh -huh. um, yeah, I kind of then did football for a while. You know, I, I was training football for a couple of years. I played some sports for my school. What position? Um, what position did you play? I was a striker. Oh, striker. Yeah, so um, I was doing that, and then um, I was just I love playing table tennis. I still do. I was playing for my school. 
and I actually stopped playing football because I was I was having health issues. I was having, um, well, I was having celiac disease. I still do, but they didn't know what's wrong with me. So um, it kind of went from, you know, me being sick all the time. And then when my parents were like, oh, he doesn't want to play football anymore, then you know, because we kept going to doctor and they're like, there's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with him. Because back then, celiac disease wasn't as known. So when I stopped going to football practice, they were like, oh, there's something actually, you know, seriously wrong if he doesn't want to play football anymore. Uh, because all the doctors kept telling us it was fine. So after that, I, I lost some weight because of that. And I just kind of stopped playing football as well. And I got really, really into gaming. But I've been gaming my whole life. So, yeah. I think for what you're telling me, uh, you I don't know if uh, it's correctly translated, but uh, you're some sort of like competitive person in general. So if it's yeah. not chess, it's uh, whatever sport. And if you can find competition uh, in any of those, you'll go on to something different like gaming or whatever, it, whatever, right? But you have to be competing at something, right? Yeah, I mean, I was always competitive, like even when I was a kid, I had, um, so I have a sister, but I have um, older cousins and they're all, you know, they're all guys, guys, and they're all like five, six, seven years older than me. So whenever we played something, I wanted to be, you know, like playing with them or competing with them. So mm -hmm. I always played like football or table tennis or computer games with people that were like six, seven years older than me. And, you know, I always wanted to beat them. So I did. And yeah, I was just always competitive. Like even when I played games with my dad or if I played games at school or sports, like I always wanted to win. Because for me, you know, playing those things against other people, the fun of it is competing and, and you know, and winning. Mm -hmm. I wasn't the kind of person who's like, well, I participated. That's what matters. Yeah, fuck that. So, yeah. So, I, you know, I'm not, I, <laughs> it was never a casual. It's not about, it's not about the money or, you know, I, I just like competing. So um so you would get upset if you you, you would get upset if you lost um actually no like i i i never raged like when when i would lose i never like um I, I would get upset with myself but it was more like i can't believe i lost that i can't believe i made that mistake i need to fix that mm -hmm. so it was never you know like acting out or raging against other people or something like that i always blame myself and i always try to stick to things that are one-on-one -on -one rather than mm -hmm. team games Yeah, because I don't really enjoy, um, you know, playing a team game and kind of being dependent on other people. Uh, I like to, you know, if I lose, it's my fault kind mm -hmm. of thing. Yeah, I understand. Better next hmm. And when did you discover that, uh, like, strategy games were your thing? Oh, when I was really young. So I was, my first strategy I played when I was, I think, about four years old um so my dad was always into computers we always had like whenever a, a, you know a new computer part because that was the time where computers were kind of booming starting out whatever you want to call it so we would always have like the newest pc parts uh you know pentium back in the day and um yeah when i was four i played a game called battle isle 2 which is a, a turn-based movement game a strategy game so after that i just kind of whenever we would go to like a store to buy to see what games came out or something, you know, back in the day on CDs, uh, I would always go and they're like, "Oh, there's this shooter game." I'm like, "Not, I want strategy." You know, that's you, the only. You thing didn't try. You didn't play the uh, Prince of Persia, that uh, pixel first version of Prince of Persia. I mean, I might have, but it was never my thing. You know, like I, I played all the games. I played all genres. You know, there was a, a while I played like FIFA and stuff like that, like 1990. I don't know what it was, six or eight or something. I played. Um, Played a lot of shooter games. I played CS and stuff like that. But I even played the the two D platformers. But I was always like, eh, it's fun, but the strategy games is just kind of where it was at. So I actually still have like over six hundred CDs of at my grandma's house in like a storage of just Holy. strategy games. Really, just strategy games? games? I think strategy yeah. games uh, were a bigger thing back then. They're not so big anymore. Hopefully, they get bigger with time but yeah it was it was crazy i remember uh i was actually talking to a friend about this literally two days ago but i remember going to that store we would go like once a week and there would always be a new strategy game that would come out like mm -hmm. every single week and there was so many of them it was insane and sometimes i had to you know pick because i couldn't play every game so i had to like pick which one i'm getting this week and i would just play it until i completed 
And sometimes if I don't complete it, I just say, I don't want another game. I didn't finish this one. So when I finish it, then I'll do, then I'll do the next one. And it catches my attention, the fact that you were so conscious about what you wanted. Like, I remember when I was a kid, like my first RTS game was, um, I think it was AOE 1. And I got to know AOE 1 because it was a, you see these like Happy Meals from McDonald's. They they would gift a like a CD like a demo CD with a lot of games and one of them was AOE, but back then I I just didn't know anything about the gaming industry about games about RTS like whatever came up if I liked it good if I didn't I would just do something else but you seem to be like very conscious of what you wanted even yeah even I when mean you were like only six or seven years old like. Yeah, even when, uh, you know, those demo CDs also existed, like we would buy a magazine, like a PC magazine, mm -hmm. and they would have like a demo with like a game or something. So we would always, you know, try to get those two and try out games. But yeah, I was always interested in that. Like every, like, let's say every, I don't know, seven, eight strategy games, we would buy like, um, you know, FIFA, then mm -hmm. seven, eight strategy games, I would buy like, I remember like Half-Life. Um, and I would play those games, I would enjoy them, but it, it's not... It just felt like you're fighting um, AI, but in, in kind of like a very a lot easier way that doesn't really make you like think too much. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you with Half Life, you just kind of go and shoot stuff, right? There's yeah. not much. You're not developing anything, and it, it was in a way um, for a lot of those games back in the day. It was the, the strategy games were really difficult, actually. Like the the AI or some maps were like really hard, but most of the shooter games were kind of hard to fail like you just kind of go mm -hmm. straight get whatever weapon is is last and just kind of blast everything through and i thought that strategy games had you know pretty good challenge where you had to think and you had to restart a couple of times especially because i was a kid so i didn't know much um but yeah i was always kind of leaning into that and it started from a very young age and it never really never really changed did, since... did your friends uh play strategy games with you or um, yeah, so in, so, you know, I had friends like outside of school and school mm -hmm. friends, um, in elementary school was when the net cafes were kind of like booming everywhere. Yeah. We like had those two. there was, there was net cafes everywhere. So after school, like almost every day, like 20 of us would go to the same net cafe and we would get like 20 PCs and then we would just like play Warcraft. Um, you know, we would play, um, we played Age of Mythology, we played Generals, Command and Conquer Generals, we played Warcraft, we played like Battlefield and Counter-Strike. So um, pretty much since start of the elementary school to like even now, like my, I always had friends that played games and uh, we would play against other schools and stuff like that. Really? Um, so you, you were really yeah. into gaming, like like competitive gaming. You were really yeah. like, I, I remember I did go with my friends to those uh, net cafe uh, places you're mentioning but just to play between ourselves, right? Uh, so it was like four or five of us and we would be like, okay, so two, the better two in one team and the other three on the other team and we would play like AOE 2 or uh, maybe Warcraft, but that was about it. Like I didn't even know that you could, I, like a few years after internet uh, started to be a thing and then you could play from home. And, and that's when I realized like I do, man, I remember, but this was, this caught me pretty old. Like I was 18 or 19 when I, I was, uh, I don't know, I was uh, going through Google and I don't know how I came across Twitch or something. And and I saw that, or YouTube, it was YouTube. I saw that they were organizing uh, StarCraft II tournaments. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, is, it, is this a thing? Like people actually compete in RTS games? Like, bro, like I've been playing RTS games all my life but since, since I was a kid, but like I never knew that uh tournaments were organized arranged and that people were competing and and, and winning money i was i was yeah. uh I, I was impressed man i was when impressed, i when you, i actually you knew. when i actually started going to net cafes like obviously the the internet didn't exist they were all like connected with you know like within the uh, vicinity of the each other so there was actually a point where so we were playing strategy games and i think counter-strike uh, like just came out or like the newest I can't remember you know the years and all that but I remember Counter-Strike came out and I was never really too much into shooters so I started playing Counter-Strike 
because I saw that there's a ranking system. <laughs> because the Warcraft 3 we played, it was just between us. And, you know, we would be playing and I would play like me and another guy versus like four or five people or something like that. So when I saw that Counter-Strike had a ranking list, uh, like we would have like three, four net cafes connected to one. And mm -hmm. then had like a thing where you can see like who has the most kills with AWP, with knife or whatever. And at the end of the month, you would get free time depending if you're first. So like if you're first with AWP, you would get like 20 hours for free playtime. So when I saw that, I started playing Counter-Strike and then I would just play with one weapon until I had the most kills. And basically I would just be playing at cafes like for free yeah. because I would, you know, be first with multiple weapons. Okay. So I started doing that. I had a few funny incidents where uh, people would like storm into the net cafe from another one and they would like a dude would start yelling like, who's this guy? He's cheating. Like, let me see. And he's like pressing tab to everyone's PC to see who this guy is. Uh -huh. And I, I'm like, that, like, that's me. Like, what, what did I do? You know, I'm, a, you know, I'm just a kid. And he's like, you're cheating. Let me see what you typed in. And I was like, I'm not cheating. You can play against me. And he's like, there's no way, you know, because people were very fired up, you know, for Counter-Strike. Yeah. Um, but after that, you know, after all the net cafes, internet came out uh, slowly. And um, I had a similar story in StarCraft 2 where uh, StarCraft 2 got announced, and obviously this is years later, uh, from the Netcafe era. And I played Brood War as a kid. I played against my cousin, and um, I saw it got announced, and I was like, I should try Brood War online, just to kind of get a feel for it a little bit kind of thing. Because uh, I was like, you know, I'm going to play StarCraft 2, so I'm assuming it's going to be similar. So I did, and... Um, I got decently high ranked and then Circle of Two came out and I had no idea about the tournaments or anything. Like you said, that people were making money. So when I started playing Circle of Two, um, I got about rank, like I think it was like 50 or 60 on the ladder in Europe. And then someone told me about the tournaments. And how, how, and old, how old were you there? Uh, when I played StarCraft, I, I was, that was 2010, right? So I was 19. Mm-hmm. So I, I didn't get to 20 yet. So basically what happened is I, I'm watching this tournament and I'm like, wait, I recognize that name. And I'm, I tell my friend, like, I, I beat this guy. And I see this guy's in the finals of a tournament. And I'm like, wait, do people make money? So you know, I go through that whole process of like, wait, there's tournaments and stuff? So I keep playing and I realize the more I play ladder, I realize all these guys that are playing tournaments, I'm playing against them on the ladder. So uh, I start signing up for tournaments and, you know, it was like, let me just get to top 64 because this was a time where StarCraft had like thousand signups. Mm -hmm. So my goal was like get top 64 and top 32 and top 16. And then I remember making it into like the bracket, a top eight. And I, I got destroyed and I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I did it. So then, you know, each week I would try to basically get one step further. And uh, I actually still remember my first win in StarCraft 2, like an online cup, mm -hmm. 400 euros. Um, was me beating a, a, a guy, I think it was from uh, Peru. He was a, a Brood War pro player called Phoenix. And I beat him in the finals 3-2, to two, and that was my first win. And I was like, oh my God, I can't believe it happened. And um, after that, you know, once I got that taste of like, oh, I can compete mm -hmm. and do what I like and play for money, I was, I was all in. You saw a completely new world in front of you. Yeah. So doing the, the thing that you like the most and actually making money out of it. Uh, that, that, that. Okay, the and dream. yeah. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, I just said that, you know, it, it was, uh, it was uh, the dream. So actually at that time, I, um, I was also in university. I got scholarship for um, electrical engineering and um, I did six months. And I, you know, I, I, I kind of was like, I don't well, want to do either, this. I, I can either know. do university or I can quit and pursue gaming. Because again, that was StarCraft 2 and, you know, uh, a Justin TV back then was, you know, blowing up. There mm -hmm. were tournaments announced and I was like, well, if I'm ever going to do this, you know, it's now or never. It's now so, or never. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I quit my, I quit university and I just went full time into gaming. And what did your parents say? Oh, they were not happy. They were not happy, uh, right? <laughs> they didn't talk to me for like, I mean, not not like literally not talk to me, but th there was like minimal amount of communication for like three to four weeks. Like they were like, you're insane. You know, 
Like you got scholarship for for a good university, and you're gonna play games. Who's gonna pay you for that kind of thing? And then uh, I remember when the first payment arrived from the tournament because it's such a foreign concept. Like yeah, you're gonna play games, and someone's gonna pay you money from yeah. like America or like Germany. Like right. So um, when I, I when I got my first hundred euros, I think it was like sent through Western Union or something. Like you know. And uh, I went and picked it up, and they're like, "Where'd you get the money?" I was like, "The tournament paid me." And they kind of like looked at me, like, but you know, they actually paid him. So I ended up like winning, you know, online cups, getting second places, getting third, winning, and so on and so forth. And um, eventually, uh, there was a you know, the, our communication kind of resumed. I mean, they didn't do it because they were evil. Like I, I get them, you know. Um, eventually, you know, we started going back to normal. And I remember, um, I was still living with my parents and, um, one day my, um, my dad, who was like more supportive of the gaming mm -hmm. was like, yo, you need to run to the store. We're having guests soon. And, and my mom kind of took the door handle to my room and I said, no, it's fine. He is practicing for a tournament. Oh, and, uh, yeah. And at that point, you know, I, I kind of knew like, okay, that they're fine with it it's so, the best feeling ever man. yeah from from then on you know if i had a tournament or i was practicing there was no people entering my room no no disturbing no nothing so since then it, it they were way more supportive because you know they figured they just want me to 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 make a living and and to be happy with what i'm doing they just didn't think i would make a living from it so yeah. and so so your career like your professional career as a as a gamer or competitive gamer started off with starcraft yeah with starcraft 2 i i was competing in uh like local uh counter-strike tournaments and i was mm -hmm. competing in local like warcraft tournaments but it was nothing serious like it i never you know went international because again that was a time where like the whole internet and everything was was booming um so i never made it like super far funnily enough some of the guys that i used to play counter-strike with ended up like doing really well later on and computed in Europe and stuff like that. But I never pursued that part. My my Counter Strike era, I, I did play it for a while, but I, it kinda just died out eventually. So you started investing your time on StarCraft two? Yeah, that was uh I mean I played Brood War for like a year, but again I never compete I didn't know there was tournaments. Mm -hmm. So I just I just played online, you know, I just go online, I queue up games, I win, I lose and you know and I'm out. What, what did your thing. parents say when uh you approach them the first time hey mom uh i need to travel to france to play a tournament like yeah so and, and the kid is only like 21 year, years old like what the fuck are you saying no you're, you're gonna stay here man. yeah so i was i i you know I, I was a late bloomer and uh regarding like life and life skills so uh it was when i turned so it starcraft came out i think in in mid 2010 in early 2011, I went to my first tournament, like on the land, and it was in Germany at Gamescom. And, uh, and how was that? I never traveled to another city alone. Like, <laughs> there was never a reason, even in Serbia, like to go somewhere alone. So I was like, I need to fly, like my first flight. And uh, my dad came with me, and it was like basically all the money that I got from tournaments, I used everything to, to go there, um, to, you know, to buy the ticket to get food because i also had ceiling disease so i had to you know figure out the food um to get the hotel and he was basically there to just you know make sure that, that I, you would stay I alive what i need <laughs> but not less than like i'm a princess but because i didn't know anything you know i didn't know how to get from from an airport to to the hotel i mean you were and only 2021 20, 2021 you were no, I, w I was 20. At you were time. 20, like you were, you were yeah, just a I kid. Yeah, I just turned 20. Yeah, so, I, and, you know, again, late bloomer kids are like mentally, I was probably like 15. Um, so, yeah, I had no experience. I, you know, didn't know any of that. didn't know how any of it works. And um, I went there. I was super nervous. There were so many people. Some people knew me from online, and I'm just this, like, guy who plays video games and now people are asking me for like autographs which was super popular back in the day and uh i actually qualified my first land tournament wasn't like a small one it was like gamescom that had like thousands of people watching mm -hmm. live and my first match was on stage and i was just like <laughs> you know i was playing i remember 
it was me and then you had like the phoenix from south america who's like the best uh, a pro player that rts has had at the time then there was idra from north america then there was like uh the koreans a couple of koreans came over they were like legends there and then there's me who's like <laughs> has few online tournaments under his belt and that's it so um what do you play what race i played i played terran so oh, terran. i get I got placed in a group with um, MC, Idra, and Cass, which was later my teammate. I'm not sure if he was my teammate already. And um, I win, I think... Or no, sorry, I was... Uh, I think it was with Cass, MC, and a Zerg from from uh, South America. And I managed to beat him. I lose to MC, and then I go 1-2 uh, against a teammate, and I you know fall out of group by one game. But that whole experience was very like overwhelming. You, you know, there was like so many people, and just the whole experience was crazy. You mentioned uh, a guy was in your team. I assume that you were reached out by a professional team at one point. Yeah, yeah. So after the very first tournament win, uh, the teams, like few teams, reached out to me because again, this is the time of early StarCraft. So there was so many teams. You know, this mm -hmm. was when. Um, uh, when Evil Geniuses, Fnatic, I don't think EG, Liquid man. was formed yet. Like all those teams. I think Liquid. Um, I think Liquid was born with Warcraft three, didn't they? I, no, I, I think they're. No. I think they're later. I think they're later, like uh, two thousand and twelve. I remember. I'm not sure. You might be. You might be right. I remember those maps uh, in Warcraft three that said Liquid and then the name of the map, Liquid and whatever. And that was the I first team remember, that I. But... Mm -hmm. I thought he was born with uh, Warcraft. He might have been later, and then yeah, had, like, there was a lot of teams. There was like, um, you know, there was MYI, there was Dignitas. Like all those teams were mm. like big names, and they were all in StarCraft. So I got reached out, you know, to by a couple of teams, some smaller ones, and um, it basically was a choice. I I might be wrong, but I think it was between Fnatic and Team Empire. And um, Fnatic was like the cooler team, but Team Empire felt like better team at the time. Uh -huh. So I decided to go with them. And um, they had like really good Terran players in the team as well. They had Cass and uh, Happy, who I don't know if you... I know Happy from Warcraft Warcraft 3. Yeah, I was in It, it is the same Happy? happy? It is the same Happy? Yeah, 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 Man, yeah. that guy yeah. is still the best. Yeah, he's... <laughs> like, what the... Yeah, like, I nobody was, beats I was, him. I was in team with Happy for, I think, three or four years in the Empire. Um, so yeah, we, we and uh, Braddock was also in the team, so we were like the four best at the time European Terrans, and we were all in the same team. So, um, and how... I, I, you know, I don't regret that decision. Like, the Team Empire was like a really, really good team that had like good managers mm -hmm. and stuff. And, um, they basically told us because they had really good sponsors at the time, they had like Seagate, Intel, Razor, like right. all the, the biggest name in the industry. So, they basically told us, like, you can go to any tournaments. You just need to tell us in advance which ones you want to go to, and we'll pay for everything. Did you ever spend time on one of those gaming houses, or it was every like all every like the relationship with your teammates and with the club was like online? Um, so we used to like uh, talk about strategies and and you know practice together and and strategize, but it was kind of like pointless to practice between one another because we were the four best Terrans. So the all everyone else we were beating. Hmm. So we could only talk about like Terran versus Zerg and Terran versus Protoss and, and help each other there. Because it's not like in AoE where you play all the Sibs. You mm -hmm. you play one yeah, race yeah. in StarCraft and that's it. I played Zerg. Um, yeah. <laughs> so in uh, regarding team houses, uh, there was a few times where there were team houses being made, but I, I felt like the players in them were not very good. It was more like a the, like a streamer clown fiesta rather mm -hmm. than like, oh, I'm going to get good practice here. So um, there, there were already gaming houses back then in... 20, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were being formed. In 2010, yeah, yeah. man, that's like very long. No, I think it was ago. 2011 they started being formed like at different parts. And most of them were actually pretty bad and they, they ended up disastrous. Like that, like drama and stuff. So and you never, never you went. never felt like sharing your time with uh, your teammates on a, in a gaming house, like having that, I don't know, atmosphere, like living that gaming house experience. So we never had it in Team Empire. Like mm -hmm. there was never a team gaming house. But uh, in 2011, late 2011, so my first LAN turn was 2011, like 
I think it was like February or March. I might be wrong. Maybe it was later. I'm not sure. Uh, and then in 2011, um, later on, I got an offer from, I don't know if you know who Mr. Bitter is. Mr. Bitter, to, no. to go to uh, U.S. and for my trip and everything to be sponsored by Razor and for me to live in California for six months and practice and then go to MLGs. Mm -hmm. So I was like, again, I'm just this fucking, you know, nerd kid. And I was like, that's insane. Like to US, like Germany was overwhelming, but to go all the way to US. So I remember I was like, so like petrified of doing that. Like to me, that was insane. Like I would never do that. And you didn't ever. do it? And I was like, no, one day I was like, I was like, I'm not doing it, you know, kind of thing. And then one day I was like, fuck it, I'm doing it. I'm doing and it. And I just replied. There you go. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm coming kind of thing. And he was like, okay, great. And I was like, oh God, I was so nervous. I was so scared. You were a little I went Cristiano to, uh, Ronaldo. Yeah, I went to, so there's a funny story with uh, me getting US visa. So, you know, I go to the embassy, I schedule a, an appointment and everything. And I go there and, uh, you know, you do an interview in like Serbian first, and then you do an interview in English. And mm -hmm. they ask you like, why are you going there? Yada, yada. You know, they're just trying to see if you're like trying to stay there or something or you're lying or whatever. So, and my English, by the way, is not good at this point. Like my English and I'm like that is. I was, I was going to ask, like when I first met you, I thought the, you, you were American or you had lived in, in the US for a long period of time because your English is, is fantastic. And th that, how, do, how do you get your English? Like, how, um, where do you get it from? I, uh, honestly, just through streaming and through dating foreign girls. Dating? Uh, that, okay. right. Woman, woman. Yeah, you're not here? That's, uh, no, she, she knows. She, she's, uh, you know, she's fine with it. She's like, oh my God, you had a past. It's like, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. um, How come yeah, not? We always, we always joke about that because whenever I said like, yeah, I dated other girls and, and, you know, people are always like looking at her like if she's going to say something. And she's like, oh my God, you had the other girlfriends? Oh no. Um, so yeah, my English was not good. Like very, think of like Slavic, just accent, you know, thick accent, not knowing a lot of the words and stuff. So I'm in, uh, you know, I'm waiting for my visa application. I do the Serbian part and there's a guy there and, and you know, I'm talking to him. He's like, why are you going? And all the advice online is like, just be honest, you know, like don't lie. They, they are trained to detect that. Like that's their job <laughs> to see if you're lying or not. So I was like, fuck it, I'll, I'll just say, well, I'm going. So I say, I got invited by Razor. I give them the documents and I'm like, they're paying me to stay there and train and I go to tournaments. And the guy looks at me and he's like, what game do you play? And I tell him and he's like, oh, I, I watch Tekken tournaments. And I was like, oh, thank fuck. You know, like, yeah. holy shit, he, he knows, knows what he knows. <laughs> yeah, so I was like, great. And he's like, okay, that's pretty cool. He's like, well, I wish you good luck and I, you know, I hope you get a visa. And I'm like, great. So then, then they're like, okay, the English part, they call my name. And I go there and there's a, uh, you know, there's a girl, woman, I don't know how old she was, she's working there. And she's like, hi, you know, why are you going to US? Is it your first time? Where did you travel? Meanwhile, I traveled like to Germany and that's it. You know, I, my passport is like empty at that point. So, you know, I start explaining to her and I can see that she just does not buy any of that. <laughs> she's just looking at me like, mm-hmm. Yeah, whatever right. you say, kid. So I start to sweat and I'm like, that, like that's it, I'm not getting visa. And she's like, so if these people are paying you, how do they find you? And I'm just like, how the fuck do I explain ladder to her in online tournaments? You know, <laughs> like, what, what, how do you explain ladder to someone? Like you press a button and it matches, you know. So I'm explaining and, and I'm kind of digging myself deeper and deeper because I just see she's not buying any of that. And she's like, one moment. And she mutes herself and she picks up the phone. And, I, and I'm just, you know, expecting she's going to come back and be like, your visa has been denied because they tell you immediately. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the interview went bad. It's like a five minute interview, but it was, it was terrible. Like I was, I was shaking. My mouth was completely dry. I was like, I'm trying to talk. And uh, she finishes a call and she's like, congratulations. You got your uh, US visa approved. There you go. And I say, what? And she's like, you got your US visa approved. And I almost said, why? But I, I was like, uh, for how long? And she said, your visa has been approved for 10 years. For 10 years? For Usually 10 years. you get visa at, at best one year if you have like some kind of like 
your passport's full or something. You got for three years. And I was like, for 10? And she's like, yes, for 10 years, your visa will arrive in like five, next five working days at, at your home address. So I'm just like walking out. I'm like, what the fuck just happened? Mm -hmm. Like, that was horrible. I was like, there's no way she bought any of that. So I get home, you know, I call my parents. I'm like, I got it. I got it approved. And I'm like, I don't know what happened. So I get home. I log into StarCraft and I get a message. Congrats on your visa. But this is not announced at all that I'm that I was asked to go to US at all. But wait, you didn't say anything? No, no, no. So this was like, you know, they, they don't want to announce it until I actually get visa and everything is sorted. Uh -huh. So I'm like, thanks. And I'm like, how do you know that? Yeah, how do you I, know? I, I got visa and the guy says, uh, I watched your games and I watched your stream and I work at US Embassy <laughs> in Belgrade. And I was like, you have are to you be kidding, kidding me? me? And he's like, no, he's, he's, he said, I work at the, the data check in the back. And he said, both uh, my coworker and I watch your games all the time. And when she had the phone call, we called her and we were dying laughing at how nervous you are. And we told her that it's true. And she was like, are you serious? And she kept asking us like, like, is this actually a thing? And they were like, yes, like approve the visa. Like he's, you know, he's legit, he's telling the truth. So they were like, yeah, we, you know, we saw you. And he was like, yeah, she was 100% not going to Man, man you have to like, I, I can't stop listening to your story, man. You have to write a book, bro. Like you, you <laughs> have to write a book, man. Like you, you yeah, were so, I, like you were so lucky. Like, what were the odds, man? Yeah, <laughs> and I was like, I was like, I can't believe it. I was like, thank you so much. Like, I was like, what are the odds of that? You know, exactly. Because it's also in Serbia, not many people play StarCraft too. So I was like, thank you so much. And the guy was like, yeah, if you need any help, add me on. Back then it was Skype, and it was like, add me on Skype. You can ask me anything. And you know, I ended up asking him questions like, what can I bring on on a airplane that's that far away like some stupid questions you know um so yeah i went to us i spent six months there um and it was great like only uh, only six was, months was, but like yeah uh, honestly like yeah. It, it, it to me it seems like you've you've spent like years in the us like yeah honestly, so i, I can't believe I it's only from dating like from dating online dating <laughs> like what the fuck? yeah so what ended up happening is i spent six months <laughs> Uh -huh. uh, it was great. The culture shock was was definitely there. Um, I had a lot of interesting experiences, and uh, that's where, where. Where do you say I California? Met... You said California. Yeah, I was in, in um, near Santa Mo um, Rancho Cucamonga, I think it was called, uh -huh. uh, which is near LA, mm -hmm. if I remember correctly. So. Um, yeah, I spent time there and then uh, I met a girl from US and we ended up dating for a few years. So obviously ah, like okay. talking on stream, talking with her like every day, you know, it, it kind of my English improved like wait, know, wait, quite a bit. Uh, hold on. So you said streaming. When did you start streaming? I started almost uh, immediately. I don't want to say 2010. Maybe it was early 2011, but it was on Justin TV. And that was that that's like the actual twitch no that's another yeah, yeah. it's the actual no no that's justin tv who later turned into twitch turned TV. into twitch right yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, because i was a starcraft 2 player basically if you're a starcraft 2 pro player you basically got auto partnered oh um nice and this was the day where getting partner was like really difficult you had to have some crazy metrics but because starcraft 2 was the most popular uh game you basically like all everyone from then Justin was like watching StarCraft. So when you applied, it was like approved within two days. Mm -hmm. You know, there was like no process or metrics you needed. So I actually got partnered almost immediately when I started streaming as well. But my like computer and my internet was so bad. I, I saw it was like 240p, you know, mm -hmm. it was FPS was dying and stuff. But so, but you were, you, uh, you were a member of a professional club, you were streaming. Uh, and you're saying that your PC specs were not that good. Can I ask, how did your income look like back then? Um, so in Serbia back then, if I remember correctly, like I might be off by, you know, 20s of euros, but you needed like, so I was living with my parents mm -hmm. um, and I needed like legit, because I, was, I wasn't paying rent. So I needed like 100 euros a month to survive. But mm. I was probably making... 
Um, so if I remember correctly, Team Empire, the moment I got signed, I think I signed for 300 euros a month because I was a nobody. You know, I mean, no it, name it's and still just a, player. It's still a big amount of money. I mean, you were only a kid and it was twenty like 2011. Yeah, so I signed for 300 euros. They sent me a bunch of gear, like Razor sent me a bunch of gear and, and mm -hmm. other sponsors. So I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. And basically from tournaments, I was pro, I mean, I, it went from like, you know, sometimes I would like, uh, you know, bomb out and get like 200 euros in a month from tournaments. Sometimes I would get like two, three K. Mm -hmm. Nice. So from then on, it was, you know, I didn't have a lot of expenses. I wasn't like, you know, uh, flexing money or something, wasting it. So uh, I made like a pretty, pretty good living. And um, yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. I, it wasn't like an issue where, you know, I was like, oh God, if I don't win a tournament, I won't have money this month kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, so from that, then on, I felt pretty secure. That was the start of your career. Uh, how did it look like, like years after? Because you've been playing or you spent quite some time playing StarCraft too, right? How was that? Yeah. How did that career look like? Like, where do you get? Uh, did you play any major big tournaments? Did you win any of them? Because I remember, man. I mean, it's been a very long time, but uh, when I, I think I played StarCraft for a couple months or three months, when I was, I think it was like twenty twenty one. So this is like ten years ago. I barely remember anything, but I do remember some names like J J Dong. Yeah. Were you at that oh. time playing StarCraft 2 or you had already left? So I was playing since 2010 to 16 competitively. Ah, and then okay. after that, which we can talk later, I made a YouTube channel. But until mm. that point, I, w I was basically an online hero, uh, what we like to call. Um, you know, I'll play online and I'll beat the guy who won the latest land tournament. I'll beat him 3-0. But you wouldn't be playing the tournament. No, no, no. I, I would beat him online and I would get like whatever prize money. I won some bigger tournaments online, like mm -hmm. for a couple of thousands first place. And then I would qualify for a, a land term like this. You know, I get paid travel because I qualified. I won the qualifier and then I would go. And at the time, like on ladder, I would be like rank one, two or three or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I would go and I would like lose to a rank 90, which is sure. like a massive difference in, in skill. And I would be so nervous. I I would like, I would play against this guy who I beat like fifteen and zero, like the last few times we played. And then I would be at a tournament at land, and there'd be noise, and I'd be like, oh my god, I gotta try something. Like I should trick him, you know? Like I should. And then I do a build I've never done before, and I start losing stuff, and I'm like, oh god, what is happening? And then the next game to come back, I try to proxy Rax and I just lose to zero, and I'm just like, what, what the <laughs> fuck just happened? You know? <laughs> And I was really, really bad at land tournament, like, like terrible. So I, I was known as like the, the online hero where, you know, online, I'm like that meme, you know, with the dog, I'm like online, I'm, you know, mm -hmm. buffed and ripped. And then in person, I'm just like, you would get very, like, very, very people nervous. probably saw me as like a free win. Yeah. So I never did well until actually my, my very, my second to last tournament, um, and I think because that was, I knew that that was going to be the end. I qualified for, um, what tournament was it? I don't remember now. But it was in uh, 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 Kiev in Ukraine. And mm -hmm. uh, it was like the European Championship. And I knew that that was it. I knew after that I'm done. I started at that point not really liking StarCraft anymore. So I was like, I'm giving it all out. Why was that? Because, because I had a, so before that I had a period of like, uh, I mean, I was stupid, but I would get rank one on the ladder and I would be like, well, I'm rank one, so I don't need to practice, mm. which is so stupid. But back then, that's just what I did. And I think it was maybe like fear of losing because in my mind, oh, I'm rank one. So if I keep playing, I'll only go down. I think it was something yeah. like that, like weird mindset. And um, I never really gave it all for tournaments. I never sat down and like played for, for 10, 12 hours a day for like a couple of weeks. I would always get to really high level and instead of maintaining it, I would just kind of slowly decline. Mm -hmm. And um, in 2016, I didn't like where the game was going. So I kind of knew like, okay, this is my last tournament. 
And um, I, I really gave it all out. I stopped streaming. Uh, you know, I told uh, uh, women, I was like, I'm, I'm playing all day. I, you were already together? You guys yeah, were already yeah, together? Yeah. How, how did yeah. you guys meet? In South Korea at it, uh, ISF. Is that a tournament? Yeah, yeah. It was like a, like a national tournament from, you know, all over the world, like a kind of like a world championship. Uh -huh. And she was there playing League of Legends. Oh, really? Yo, she was a pro player, too? <laughs> no so way. That, okay, so that... So <laughs> South okay. African pro player... Is, is this like uh, dark past uh, stories that woman doesn't want us to talk about, or...? I mean, I don't know if she talks about it too much. I think people know, but... Um, like basically when when i went to south korea to compete for starcraft she was there for league of legends mm -hmm. and i was for starcraft i just played league of legends for fun and i was higher rated than their whole team <laughs> so they were as a, not wait as, as a league of legends player you said yeah 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 my oh. league of legends rank was higher than any of their it was a girl's team, team? No, no, no. It was she was she was like four guys in her playing, uh -huh. but they just didn't have like super high ranked player. I think their highest player was like Diamond League, oh. so that's where that's where we kind of met. But um, yeah, so that last term, I was like, I'm going all out, and mm -hmm. I get third place, and I beat like some of the best players in Europe, which it's kind of like AOE four where European players are. Let's just say there's a lot more European players than NA players. Mm -hmm. um, so I was like, and that was the, the only time, the first and the only time in Sargov 2 where I felt I played my game. Uh -huh. You know, like I went there and I wasn't nervous. And I think part of that, it was because this is my last tournament. Yeah. So who cares? So who cares? Yeah. And I remember playing and winning and not, not winning against a rank 90. Like these were, I think it was six, top 16 players in Europe. And I remember playing and I was like, I just destroyed that guy. Mm -hmm. Like, not win, I fucking destroyed him. So I was like, I wasn't nervous, and I was like surprised by it, right? So I played a whole tournament. I got third place, and then I qualified for China. I thought that's going to be my last tournament because I didn't expect to actually qualify in top four. So I went to to China for like the global playoffs, and I got a really rough group with uh, Maru. I don't know if Mar you know. Yo, Mar like the 17 year old guy, like he couldn't even play, like he wasn't. Uh... Uh, old enough to play yeah. the tournament he's still playing but but yeah, he's at still this playing. time he was winning already gsls so yeah i got in group with maru and i had a pretty rough group and um yeah i ended up getting knocked out but i was actually like that was the the, the european tournament and and that one i was happy because i felt i played my game mm -hmm. i didn't win but i was satisfied with with what i showed and I had no regrets. And, and I, I knew, like, yeah, I can quit now. Even though that was my best performance, I was like, you know, th that's it for me. Um, I'm done. Uh, also, funnily enough, in that uh, European tournament, I knocked out Marine Lord in quarterfinals. I was gonna, I was about to ask, like, when did you guys meet? Because you, you know Marine Lord, you know Vortex and Lucifer from, from StarCraft 2. Yeah, so when Lucifer and Vortex were at their peak, that's when I took like a year break break from StarCraft, so I wasn't too active. But uh, in that tournament, and I still make fun of Marinler for that, um, I remember he was like hyped as the best foreign Terran at the time, and he was practicing like Koreans and stuff. And we meet in quarterfinals, and I beat his ass, and I knock him <laughs> out of the tournament. And, uh, you know, at the time, we weren't really like, you know, friends or even friendly or anything. We were just competing. Uh, but yeah, I still like to make fun of him for that. So yeah, after that, I was I was kind of done. Like I said, I I knew it, and um, Mareka was like, "So what's next?" And I'm like, mm -hmm. "No idea." Like I was I was toying with the idea of of going uh, pro in League of Legends because no, I was man. really thank God that you I, didn't do or did you? No, I was I I was really high ranked in League actually. I what what were you? So when, in season three, which is when I took a year break, uh -huh. I think it was 2013 or 14, mm -hmm. uh, I played league for about six months at a time. And I was one game from uh, place and matches for Challenger, for Challenger. on the US. Uh -huh. But this is when Challenger was top 50 only. What did you play? What was your role? I played mid lane. You, you played mid? Cassidy? Yeah. LeBlanc? No, 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 I no, I did not play those. So I played, uh, uh, usually I played really weird picks, but I played, um, like for mages, I played like, uh, like Sereth or Orianna, 
uh, from Assassins. I did like Fizz. I never liked Yasuo or Zed. Um, I also played a lot of ADC in middle, which at the time wasn't popular at all. That meta mm -hmm. came like way later on, but I played a lot of Tristana on the middle, uh, Lucian, stuff like that. Um, and basically during that time of league, I actually, there was some one-in-one -one tournaments from um, their website called PGL. And uh, they were starting out their website. I think now they, they like made it and they organized tournaments in CSGO or something. I don't know. Or Counter-Strike 2. But uh, they hosted like $10,000, $20,000 10, $20, tournaments in one-on-one -on, -one on like the um, Howling Abyss. Uh huh. Yeah. With like some some special rules, and I end because I was like really high ranked. I ended up playing those, and I ended up winning like two of them, and I got second place in one of them. So funnily enough, I probably made more money from tournaments from than League of Legends than StarCraft. <laughs> yeah. Holy so um, yeah, after that, you know, I, I was kind of playing with the idea like, do I go back to League? Do I give it another shot? And I was like, man, I can't, I can't deal with people. So. I'm a skip and Mareko was like, why don't you make a YouTube channel? And I was like, who the fuck is going to watch? Like, what am I going to, I don't know how to do it, you know? And she's like, just try. And I'm like, Cause she, she had one, right? She, she had one. No, 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 no she, she didn't. didn't. She, no. Mm -hmm. So she was like, just make one, just try it. And, um, uh, I was like, again, I was, I was like, I know nothing about it. I was like, why would people watch me? Like I had my viewership in Starcraft at that time like 2016 i had way more viewers like early on in, in wings because there was way more people but i had like maybe 150 200 viewers on twitch and um i was like who's gonna watch my youtube like i don't i don't have following i don't have like to make it you know like mm -hmm. yeah i have some following i don't have following to make it i don't know anything about video editing so she's like just try it and if it wasn't for her i wouldn't have made a youtube channel and um I made it and she's like, um, just upload stuff. And I was like, yeah, but I don't know how to make a thumbnail. She's like, just upload no thumbnails. Just record a video and just upload it without editing anything. <laughs> so that's kind of how it started. And then I spent a lot of time learning everything about YouTube. A lot of time. I was probably doing like 14 hour days for over a year straight. Holy. Because I was so bad at, 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 you know, everything. And once you start editing videos, you realize how much shit there is. There is now the shit. programs are a lot better. You know, mm. like I, I know it hasn't been like 20 years, but like I remember like every year something would come out and it's like instead of, you know, doing backflips and front flips to change one thing. Now it's like you push a button and it just auto generates everything. It selects everything and everything is sorted. But back then I had to like watch hours and hours of guides, how to edit, how to big sound issues and all that so i just kind of slowly started working started making some terrible thumbnails and <laughs> Man, I, I did that for about like two years on my own i'm okay. listening i'm listening to you uh saying that rebecca would support you and would uh you know push you to do new stuff like open a youtube channel i don't know how if you i don't know if you know how lucky you are to have a supportive girlfriend like uh like woman like someone yeah. who actually understands uh, what you enjoy enjoy doing the yeah. most, right? And, and what makes you happy, and actually shares the same interest with you. Like you, you guys make a perfect couple. I think I've told you before, <laughs> but like it, you yeah. are very lucky, and and so she is. Yeah, she she. We actually get told that pretty often by people. Like, uh, you know, if I have gamer friends, they're like, you're you're you know, same yeah. thing. Like you're so lucky. Like she. Not only gets games but she plays games exactly. and you know you share the same interest and it's like when i play a tournament you know we go for like a, i finish a tournament we go for a walk and she's like what happened in the games you know why did he do this in in the game against you know with malins against jean d'arc like she she gets it mm -hmm. and uh the funny thing is that her work because she has a full-time job other than you know streaming they also tell her like you guys are so lucky and you guys are like the the dream couple and you have like the dream situation and everything you do so yeah um, totally yeah i mean it's like i said if it was for i would have never made a youtube channel because i was just like who's gonna watch that shit um uh, but over time you know it, it it grew and um i got a pretty big following and then um i started doing you know just um because i was i was thinking like how do I make it in YouTube? Like mm -hmm. what? Because obviously there were people casting games, there were people making guides, 
So I wanted to do something that no one's doing. And because I was pro player uh, for six years, I said, why don't I make the content that the other YouTubers cannot make? Because they're, they're not, I mean, to put it bluntly, they're not good enough, right? Because mm -hmm. the other YouTubers were like masters or, the, you know, they were casters. So I started doing uh, the series to Grandmaster where I would put a challenge, like imagine uh, doing only Spearman to Conquer 3. Mm -hmm. Except I did it to like top 100 in the world. So I did these different challenges. And because, um, you know, I played Terran, I started with that and people loved it. Some people hated me for it uh, because I was killing the game. Uh, apparently, you were so, killing the game, and they had nothing to I say about Protoss. Wait, they, they yeah. had nothing to say about Protoss being fucking OP for years. Yeah, so so it was like basically, I actually it was like it got really wild. Like I got death threats, and people were oh, like, really? Yeah, people were like, insane. Like the StarCraft Two community is uh, is wild. Uh, I got I got harassed for it quite a lot. So basically every like let's say two months I would make a new account and I would beat like 10 people and then I'm in masters So basically the idea was like I'm killing the game because I'm making people quit Yeah in those 10 games So and, you, uh, you were one of the first uh, smurfs ever Right, but you know, I wasn't smurfing in like bronze. I, I just made a new account and I try to get out of it as fast as possible. Like I wasn't staying in there, right? Um, so then I'm like, well, I'm only doing Terran, so maybe I should do Protoss and Zerg. So then I started actually practicing to improve my Protoss and Zerg. Mm -hmm. And I think the highest rank I got was like rank 16 or 17 on Europe with random. And... Um, I mean, people, people I may not understand how hard it is. I mean, it's not like I've played a very long time StarCraft 2, but I can tell that you have to stick to one race. Like, it's not like you can be changing. So yeah, playing you, you random race play. is pretty hard. Yeah, it's it's not even comparable to playing 16 Civs in a Yeah, I no, not even comparable, like, no. It's, it's so, so different, and it takes so much practice. And um, so when I did that, I was like, okay, I feel like I'm good enough to now do the challenges with Protoss and Zerg to get basically more people. Because at that point, only Terrans watched me. Mm -hmm. So I started doing Protoss and Zerg challenges and my YouTube channel grew quite a lot. And um, uh, yeah, the community as a, as a whole was not, like I said, too happy with me. Uh, like I, I would say in StarCraft, I was probably overall pretty disliked. <laughs> uh, and for like the weirdest reasons, like, I understand, you know, I can be an asshole and everyone can be an asshole sometimes, but one of the things that followed me for years was, and I actually saw this comment a year ago being brought up, which I found just absolutely insane. So in 2011, there was an online tournament with like 300 viewers and I played against a teammate, Happy, uh -huh. and I didn't GG. You'd... I just left the game. That's it. I did not type GG. This followed me for years as one of the most bad manner player because who doesn't type a GG to their teammate? I think I, I've heard I this story before joking. from you. I yeah. wish I was joking. This was for years. And actually last year, someone linked me a post about me in StarCraft and there was a dude who wrote, and I kid you not, wasn't he the guy who didn't GG to people? And I'm like, holy fuck, man. Like... There was one time. And the funny thing is, uh, so basically I, I lost the game and I was like, fuck. And I just, you know, left. And then I PM'd Happy and I said, GG, right? Uh huh. That thing followed me for years. What, what did and, Happy uh, play? He also played Terran. He also played Terran. Oh. And his micro was insane. Like it was out of this world. It still is, man. Have you seen him yeah. play Warcraft 3? Yeah, I watch, I watch Warcraft tournaments sometimes, yeah. Yeah, he, he's not yeah, a man he's of really a lot of words, right? No, he's not. The <laughs> thing about Happy is, uh, uh, Happy is like a really serious person line. He doesn't really say much, but when you are with him, like in person, he's actually, uh, or I don't know if he still is, but back then he was like really goofy, which is like really <laughs> weird because like, he was always like a super serious guy who just like, he, yeah, looks, so, he looks so serious, man. Yeah, he's like, yeah, that was a good game. Even when he wins the tournament, 50, he goes, like, yeah, exactly. He goes, races the cup, and like, yeah. 
Fuck you. Yeah. Uh, I remember <laughs> when when we were going to tournaments together, like he was super goofy and joking and like kind of like, and I was like, who the who's this guy? Something happened um, to him. Something happened yeah, to him. So, Maybe a girl. Maybe it was a girl. No one knows. <laughs> okay, so the, uh, so you started streaming StarCraft 2. You opened a YouTube channel. Uh, you started getting uh, a lot of followers. Uh, what made you change uh, your mind about the game that you wanted to um, play? Like, what made you change from StarCraft 2 to AoE 4? Or was, was there anything in between? Um, I mean, so... Th this this feeling of like people not liking you actively and and you kind of know it like i remember i had serious anxiety about opening starcraft subreddit because i was terrified of seeing my name there because mm. i knew that because of the gg be... thing no because because the of like the the series thing to grandmaster mm. like people mm. would be like yeah he's a terrible person and he's like piece of shit and he's this and he's that and obviously i had a like i had over fifty thousand subs so it's like obviously people like my content too but you know how mine works it focuses yeah. on the negative right so yeah. i had like you know because i want to read the subreddit but i had so much anxiety that i'm going to see my name there because i i know what it's going to be it's not going to be anything positive it never was so i, I was terrified of like opening the subreddit and i, I kind of just knew like yeah, in my own bubble, people loved what I was doing and people had fun and a lot of people, you know, went through hard times and, and watched my, my videos and it helped them and they enjoyed the series and they didn't think it was the end of the world. But then you also kind of know as like a whole, the general vibe is that people don't like you. So uh, I kind of wanted to stop playing StarCraft for a while. And mm -hmm. this was in um, like 2019 and, and 20. I was doing series, but I, I honestly had a hard time streaming longer than three hours. Like, and I I would, let's say I would be like, I'm going to go live five. And then it's like four and I'm just sitting on my computer and I'm just dreading that I have to go live. Yeah, Not feeling like anxious. Dreading, but yeah, I'm feeling anxious. I don't want to do it, but I need to do it because I need YouTube content. And then I would go live and I remember, uh, Subconsciously, I made a YouTube uh, a stream intro that was 20 minutes. Holy man! <laughs> so that, so that I would play it for 20 minutes. So when I come online, I need to stream three hours. So basically, I'm not streaming three hours. I'm yeah. streaming two hours and 40. And I remember I would do a game and I would look at the time, like how long I've been live, and I see like 50 minutes. I'm like, oh god, I need to do two more hours. Like it was that bad. Where I'm like yes. counting minutes, and um, so it was like a year year and a half two years of that and uh, it's like i enjoyed it but at the same time again it wasn't it anymore you know i i knew that it wasn't it i just didn't have the balls to actually quit to try something else because it wasn't about content or being a pro player i didn't want to do starcraft anymore i was kind of done with it so because you couldn't stand the haters no, it was just like, I, I was kind of done with StarCraft. I mean, I played it for 11 years at that point. You weren't having that's fun cool. anymore? Yeah, I mean, that's, hmm. you know, nothing wrong with the game. The game has changed to something I dislike, right, mm -hmm. over time. But it's not even about that. It's like, I played it for 11 years. Like, people don't even realize this, but I've played, like, over 50,000 games in StarCraft. Oh, my God. Like, I have played so much StarCraft that... I felt like there's nothing for me to do anymore. There's nothing for me to explore. Even the series that I did, like I did the most ridiculous shit that I could think of. And I ran out of ideas for that too. So I was just kind of done. And um, yeah, I never had the balls to quit. And then in 2021, my dad passed away um, right before AOE 4 came out. Like few, I think it was even a few days for... Um, I can't remember when AOE 4 came out exactly. So my dad passed away. And um, at that point, it was just, you know, he was in the hospital for a while. And I knew it was happening. And we didn't know how to tell my mom because she was like, no, he's going to be fine. And I was like, he's not. You know, I, I knew what the, the end result of that was. And 
it felt like at that point, like who gives a fuck? You know, he passed away, and you know that whole situation. I mean, it's fucking awful. Like losing a parent is is terrible, and nothing really makes it better. You know, you you have a lot of questions for yourself. You have a lot of what ifs. Uh, you know, what should have happened? Why didn't this happen? Why didn't that happen? And at that point, I I didn't give a crap about anything or anyone. So I was just like. I'm not, I'm done with Starcraft. Like, I, I don't care. Like, what's going to happen? I'm not going to get money. Like, who cares? Hmm. So, um, so even when my dad passed away, like, I, I literally have, in a weird, fucked up way, I have him to thank for me being an AFO right now. Because realistically, and I thought this uh, about this a lot, I would have probably never quit Starcraft. Um, I would have probably just kept doing it because the, you know, the thought of quitting something that you did for 11 years is, is crazy and it's a big leap of faith and it's a big risk. Um, you know, because I've been doing this for since I became an adult and it's like, what am I going to do if that's something else doesn't work out? So after he passed away, I basically did, I think, one StarCraft stream and I was just like, Man, what the, f like, what am I doing? Like, you know, who gives a fuck? you lost you know someone very important to you and i was like i don't want to do this anymore so i did one starcraft 2 stream and uh, aoe 4 came out and you know everyone tells you like just do what you want like obviously you want to make yourself feel better feel not shit and um you know i, I was going through through the emotions and stuff and mm -hmm. i just started playing aoe 4 i never planned to do it like i saw the preview or like the beta or whatever I had no special opinion of it and then i started streaming it and you know my way to to cope with my dad passing was i was streaming like 14 hours a day and that's all i did i would wake up i would hang out with marika for half an hour an hour doesn't matter two hours whatever and the moment i would be alone my thoughts would start running so i just turn on the stream and i you know i just start playing and I would stream for about 14, I, I even did like 15 hour days. And this went on for almost a full year where I, I you know, I just didn't want to be alone. So mm -hmm. I just played, I just streamed all the time. And the moment I would end the stream, I would just go to bed straight away. So and yeah, that I did brought for, you, and that brought you here. Yeah, I did that for a very long time. Obviously, you know, in time it, you know, I, I, started streaming less you know people probably remember i used to do like 14 hours and 12 hours then 10 then my standard became like an eight hour and i would mean like oh it's an eight hour stream that's a short one today you know mm -hmm. um but yeah i i did that and obviously i i never looked back once at starcraft like mm -hmm. there wasn't any point like oh shit i don't have content for starcraft like it was just from a zero to just a hundred in a4 and i just started doing a4 content and i remember my viewership on YouTube plummeted. Like I went from 20, 25,000 views per video to like under 1K in like a week. <laughs> and I just didn't give a fuck. You know, I was just like, who, who cares? <laughs> so I just kept doing it. And there was like, oh, why are you not streaming StarCraft? Why not? I just ignored all of it. Yeah. I didn't read comments. You know, I didn't give a fuck. I just played the game and, um, my viewership in AO4 actually jumped almost immediately. Like, I think in the first month, I went from like 150 average in StarCraft to like eight, 900 in AO4. Holy. So it was like a big jump straight yeah, because away. Because if you think about it, there, like, there wasn't really anyone as cute as you in AO4. Like, to start with AO4, I mean, there's a lot of controversy here, right? Between, you know, AO2 players and AO4 players. Like, uh, like AOE 4 never got to be like the better game between the two at least that's what AOE 2 players say so it's not like the pro scene in AOE 4 like grew up immediately after the game was mm. released so there you came and you found like a, like a, a whole audience asking for a pro player asking for someone good to teach uh, them how to play the game right like at that time how many like how many other streamers were there or pro players so initially there was there was a lot of streamers initially but the difference was they would stream for three four hours i was always live uh -huh. like 
I was live from, you know, noon to like 2 a.m. European time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're a viewer and then you go watch streams and it's like you see those guys always online, then you're probably going to click on, on that guy, mm -hmm. right? And then yeah. everyone goes offline, but I'm still online. And then all the viewers from other streams went to my stream. So I think it just became a spot for people to, you know, just hang out. They come from work, they turn on my stream because I'm live. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a almost like a subathon, you know. Like I was always live, and and I was live for a very long time. And I was a StarCraft X StarCraft II pro player. There was a lot of players. There was actually a lot of StarCraft II players that switched over to AA4, and a lot of them did not do well. Like not breaking it in like top two hundred even because it's just a different game. It is a different um, game. Then AOE2 players were obviously there, but their audiences were kind of not happy hmm. with them playing AOE4. And I feel like my audience, you know, almost immediately just changed completely. Like, I still have some people that, that watch me from StarCraft 2 days, but I would say like 90, 95% were just our all new people since two years ago. How did you um, find the change between, like, from StarCraft 2 to AoE 4? Like, how, how was, how did that, like, how do you find the game? Like, mechanics, uh, APM, uh, game knowledge needed? Um, I mean, initially it was really uh, difficult because StarCraft 2 has really good response rate and that's something that was talked about many times. Mm -hmm. Like, the response rate of the units is really good and in AoE 4 it's not, especially early on. There was a lot of bugs, but funnily enough, none of that bothered me. You know, like, and I, and I think it goes back to my dad passing away. Like, none of that bothered me. I was never like, oh my God, there's a bug. It ruins my day. I just kept playing, you know, mm -hmm. I... I it is what it is. It's going to get fixed. Like, what am I going to do? Yeah. Um, so it was a tough transition in terms of, like, unit movement. But over time, it just kind of disappeared. You know, you get used to it, especially after playing for that long. Um, there's some things that I preferred in StarCraft. But there's some things that um, I enjoy way more in AOE 4. Like, I, 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 I always thought when I was playing StarCraft that I don't like the random... Uh, generated maps like mm -hmm. in AoE 2. I yep. remember when I was watching, I was like, that's crazy. Like, the maps are not always the same. That's insane. Like, that's mm -hmm. that's so RNG. But then you realize that's part of the game and it's part of the strategy to, like, adapt to your map. So it adds, like, an extra layer of strategy. And uh, my favorite part about AoE 4 is that it's way more strategy focused and tactics focused than StarCraft 2 is. StarCraft 2 is, is very much micro. micro intense. Yeah, intense. And, and that's it. You know, you blink, you lose mm -hmm. kind of thing. And AoE 4 is a lot, a lot more strategic. And the fact that there's so many civilizations and there's so many maps, like a map can be a land map, but it can be completely different from Dry Arabia. Mm -hmm. Whereas most StarCraft 2 maps are almost, I always made this joke, which wasn't really a joke. The maps are like the same. They're just, I always said they're like repainted differently, but mm -hmm. they play out the same. You know, you, you have your safe expansion, you have a safe third, your fourth is a bit uh, far away, and then the rest of the map is whatever. Because the most important part is the start. So, and then AOE 4, you know, you had hybrid maps, you had water maps, you had closed off maps, you had Dry Arabia, and it was just like a lot of information to learn, to, to kind of absorb. And um, I really enjoy learning new games mm -hmm. and like figuring out what's the best way to do something. So, um, but yeah, I don't know if you know this, but when I started AOE 4, I was actually playing Mongols only for like three months. I, I only played English, but that's more of a normal thing, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, the reason why I played Mongols is because I was like, well, I, I didn't really play AoE too much. So I figured when I saw that Mongol doesn't need houses, I figured that would be easier <laughs> for me to transition into from StarCraft. And Wait, 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 I, but I, like in StarCraft, didn't Terran have like Depot? Like, yeah, yeah. Those were like did, houses, did. right? Yeah, yeah, he did. Every, every race had, but my thought process is AOE 4 is like different there's like maps to learn the randomly mm -hmm. generated stuff the units there's four resources mm -hmm. so i thought like maybe i just uh, uh kind of free myself from the cognitive load of having to make houses all the time to make myself learn other stuff first and then i'll learn that part because it's a mechanical part yeah. and um yeah i played mongo for like three months straight and i remember uh 
I was doing like the uh, the silver train when no one was doing it. And I, 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 was I like, remember hey, that time. Oh, it's good. I was like, no, it is good. Like if you can set up the train, it's really good. And I was like massing Mangudine one on one, which people didn't do at all. People were just doing like uh, BC. Come on, that's how that's how you into, get like, uh, that's how you castle. start getting hated, man. That's how you start getting hated. Now then you would upload that video or play Mangudai mm -hmm. until uh, to conquer, and that's how you yeah, start getting yeah. hated, man. Yeah, <laughs> it was it was fun time, and then eventually, what I was I was kind of like, you know what? I think I know everything about Mongo, and then I was like, let's learn other sips. So kind of started playing the the newer or not the newer ones but the other ones i think i i can re i think it was yours i think one of the first guys that i ever uh watched on youtube was the i think it was the 222 opening from english i don't mm -hmm. think it, it, that was i think it was yours into fast castle yeah with like two stables in monastery i, I can still remember and the yeah. other one was from mongols like saving the stone and getting uh, like two pairs of uh of knights it was knights at the time it was nice, Mongol nights. Yeah, yeah, there was no cash again. I mean, that no was cashier. that was like the go-to build. You do a tower rush, and then yeah. you literally make a tower in your gold, and you make pastures gave more sheep or a faster sheep. So you would just make two pastures and you just go castle. Like that was the whole that was the whole game plan. Everyone was doing that. So then I started like the silver tree trading into Mangudai, and um, you know that was an experience. But yeah, then a bunch of you know the kind of the top of aoe4 showed and you know surprise surprise it was mostly starcraft 2 players but mm. then there were some aoe2 players so um it was kind of similar thing to starcraft 2 beginning i was like ah oh, maybe i should start competing again you know like i'm playing against these guys in ladder i'm doing pretty well so maybe i should i mean you, you can't someone like you like you can't hold yourself from competing man like it, it, it it's a yeah, feeling that's I mean, always gonna like, chase you man you can't yeah, so, nah. So after that, um, I actually didn't play in the first tournament, uh, the uh, uh, Genesis. Because mm -hmm. um, I think I only played Mongo at the time, like when when Genesis was happening. So I remember I watched that and I was like, oh my God, like people are playing Abbasid. I remember uh, Mr. Viper Finals and Mr. played like Abbasid on Boulder Bay. And I was like, wow, you can play Abbasid on water map. <laughs> you know? Um, and uh yeah oh fun fact by the way i was on team empire with mr too oh really yeah i i mean i was i was uh i don't know how i ended up on mrs uh twitch channel the other day and i went on to his videos and he has like very old videos of him um like casting age of mythology games mm -hmm. <laughs> from mr i was like what the fuck? i didn't even know like you you played back then anyway. but yeah he's a big fan of the series yeah yeah, Mista is, uh, it, it's funny because I, I think I was in team with Mista in like 2013 or something in Team Empire. Because he played StarCraft II professionally for mm -hmm. like a year, maybe. And yeah, I was in team with him. And then we, you know, whenever we would see each other, we'd always like talk and like, what's up? And then 10 years later, we're, you know, playing Age of Empires 4 against one another. So Nice, man. Nice in in, like in Spanish, we say uh, the world is too small. Hmm. I don't know if it's it's something uh, yeah, yeah, people it's, say in it's, English. It's it's crazy. Okay, let's talk about this last year because this last year has been probably the best year, right, in your career. Uh, yeah. Safe safe to say. Um, I was actually listening to you the other day, and before the, this last tournament, this uh, EGC finals tournament, uh, was celebrated, and you were say, like you didn't look very confident very happy about how the year had gone and i was wondering like because i try to watch as many uh professional games as i can also cast them and i was wondering like did beastie do that bad throughout the year and, and i've been like reviewing the tournaments and going through the games and if i'm not mistaken you've placed first on this last one uh first on the first one of the year which was the uh elite elite game no not elite a golden league golden league golden 2 league, yeah then you play second on cta and third on elite classic like i mean your results are very good i mean you could have you could have placed first on every single tournament i mean like but i thought that you weren't very happy but uh, i mean man you've won two tournaments um, out of four yeah and i actually think that i don't know when the team tournament was i don't know if it was this year i think yeah uh, i think it was I, it was I think it was no maybe end of the end of last year. I, I don't can, know if I can it was remember. the end of the last year. The one you played with Marine Lord and Demo, right? No, no, no. That oh. was that was the one last year. The last oh. one I played was with Marine Lord. Uh, we ended up winning like 
Fuck, who did we play against? I, I think it was against Poppy Boy and Wham in the finals. I can't remember I'm not that sure. one. But anyway, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I've kind of like, I, f I feel like after Golden League 2, I lost a little bit of like competitive drive, I guess. What? Um, I don't know. I don't know if it's years. I don't know if I'm just like, I, I legit don't know. I started doing like um, more content. I think it also has to do with the fact that like we don't have like massive, massive tournaments anymore. So I'm like, mm, do I want to put all my eggs in one basket kind of mm -hmm. thing? Uh, so I started after Golden League 2, which I think was in April or, or May. I started focusing a lot more on YouTube content. And I started doing like FFAs and stuff because I wanted to have like, you know, if tournaments end today, I wanted to make sure that I'm fine and that my stream is fine. So then, you know, I focused a lot more on the tournament. Um, there was the CTA that, you know, Marine Lord and I got wrecked by Lucifron. Hmm. Um, so that was an experience getting like uh, eight games and six for mirror games. Yeah. Um, what are the odds? After draw, but... each draw, I was just like, just... I remember I was just laughing. I was like, I don't know. Like I, I heard, I think I heard Lucy from saying that he tried to get those mirrors out. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, it, it was. Uh, he definitely drafted way better in that one because the maps that we had in order were like very obvious. Like, mm -hmm. um, uh, it was either like I'm gonna pick a sieve that he knows gonna pick, and he placed the mirror, or it was a fifty-fifty, and he just went with a 50 50 and we got a mirror mm -hmm. so basically the the, the funnily how the the odds work with the sieves and maps every time we got a mirror the chances of another mirror only increase they don't increase at all they only increase because the maps that we had left over were very focused on one sieve. so like saves, yeah. mounting clearing <clears throat> it's like I, I i think it was he either like vetoed English or I played it already. It's like, oh, what am I gonna play? Obviously, I'm gonna play HRE. Mm -hmm. So it's like he picks HRE and we play that. And then like the next map was like a water map, and it's like, well, I don't have HRE, so obviously I'm gonna play China. Yeah. So then he picks China. And the the more we went, you know, it, it was like mirror, mirror, mirror. And then at one point, it was like I'm either gonna pick like I can't remember like Delhi or French, let's say. And I just went with Delhi, and I got Delhi Mirror, and I'm like, yeah, that's that's it. Because for the rest of the series, I was just screwed because it was all mirrors. Um, and you don't you don't feel comfortable, uh, comfortable. No, I I don't really, I don't really practice mirrors. Like I've said this many times, it's not like a secret. I who's, just who's your enjoy uh, practice them. buddy? Your practice um, buddy, who is it? Actually, if you, no if you can one, tell, like, if you can tell. No, I I don't have one. Uh, and why are you laughing? So I'm <laughs> laughing because. Um, like a lot of my practice is on the ladder. Now the mm -hmm. most I've played was with Louis. So there are some terms where I practice a lot with Louis. And you know, I practiced with him when he was like top twenty player, because I always thought like he's good and you know he, he is has very good now. He's very good. And now he's very, very good, right. So um so Vortex and Lucifer play with each other mm -hmm. and Marine Lord practices with them. Wham and Poppy will practice with each other, and Marine Lord also practices with them. But um, then the rest of the players either also like three D team practices together, so I don't really have anyone to play with. Mm -hmm. And part of it makes sense because um, like you don't want to practice with like fifty people; you mm -hmm. want to kind of keep your strats, you know, closed yeah. off. Mm -hmm. So for like Vortex and Lucifron, it makes sense that they play with each other and then they play with Marine Lord as like the uh, the wild card in a way to test strategies on him, mm -hmm. right? Because he's the outsider. Yeah. So maybe get some ideas from him. But it doesn't make sense for them to practice with me and Poppy Boy and Wham because then everyone knows how they play. And it's similar with Poppy Boy and Wham situation. So I'm kind of just stuck playing ladder and uh, just asking people like, randomly like, hey you want to play some games kind of yeah. thing so i don't really have a practice <laughs> partner i would probably say the muslim uh, could be a good practice buddy he practices early in the day uh, and yeah. the thing is you also want like that the top top level play uh is like very aggressive you know like all the top players are very aggressive so uh there are some players that are really good but they play either very unique or passive 
which doesn't really help me. Mm -hmm. It I feel like it it makes me make wrong decisions. Mm -hmm. So, um, like when I play against Recon, like I, I played a, a lot with him in the past as well, not so much recently. He's a great player to practice with, but if I'm preparing for Vortex, that doesn't help me at all yeah. because they do every decision completely opposite. opposite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you also build up a muscle memory to where I see units and I'm like, oh, he's not going to attack there because mm -hmm. I practice Recon and he doesn't attack there. But then you see Vortex just charge on their TC and you're like, what is he doing? And then you end up losing villagers and you're like, that's not what my muscle memory says it was good, but it was good. Mm -hmm. Just because, you know, Vortex is more aggressive. So I like to play with Louis because he's like, um, I would say, well-versed, like playing aggro. And I think his micro is good. And I think he's good late game. So he makes for like a very good practice partner for high level matches uh, because he, he can play like different styles. Um, it's kind of like, you know, extreme of it would be to practice against someone who just tower rushes and you're trying to prepare for a 2 TC player. It's like kind of pointless like it doesn't really help you at all so and i think playing ladder is pretty good to just experience like the random crap that people throw mm -hmm. at you so yeah. well i don't know what you're doing exactly but whatever you're doing keep doing man because you placed first a lot uh, by which, which by the way man congratulations uh, i didn't say congratulations <laughs> Thank you. I, I did not expect that one but uh <laughs> yeah, yeah was, I, uh... I remember you on one of your last streams saying something like uh okay guys uh, i'm gonna go lose the tournament and i uh, will be back I remember yeah, you so saying something I, like that. I just, I just didn't. So basically, it's, it's, um, it started with Sabathon. So, long story short, I thought Sabathon was gonna last a week, tops. And mm. basically, I thought, okay, I'll do the Sabathon, and then I'm gonna practice for the tournament. That was the plan. I'll do the content. I'll be, you know, the 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 clown right for a week, and then I'll I'll go practice. I'll still stream, but you know, I'll practice and I'll get some games in. And then Sabathon went for 18 days. Holy fuck, so, there was like three days between my Sabathon ending and my matches in the tournament. And I was like, I didn't practice at all. Like, like I would stream for like 14 hours, but I would play maybe two hours. Mm -hmm. Like of actual one-on-ones. Because it was like, I got to do the spin the wheel stuff. I got to do the FFA. I got to cast this. And even when I was playing, I was tired. Like I was streaming 18 days, like 14, 16 hours a day of, of being on computers. I was just fucking tired. Like, I didn't want to think about strategies. I had no time. So I just told my stream, like, guys, like, I, I don't... And I and then I took a break because I was streaming for 18 days. So I took a two-day break. And I just told my stream, like, guys, like, don't expect too much from me. Like, you know I didn't play. I, I didn't have time to play. So I don't think I'm going to do well. Uh, like, because I don't want people to, you know, get their hopes up because they're always like, yeah, you're going to win. And I'm like... I don't think I will, but, you know. Um, and then, wow, uh, Season of Discovery came out, and I knew that I was going to play that no matter what. So I was like, well, I didn't practice. So, like, what's the point of practice? Like, studying, uh, you know, one day before the exam kind of thing. So I was like, fuck it, I'll just play WoW. So I proceeded to, basically, WoW came out, I think, like, on, on Thursday. Mm -hmm. And I finished Sabathon, I think, Tuesday evening. So I played WoW from Thursday to Saturday morning. In three days, I played like, no exaggerating, like, <laughs> like over, like in 72 hours, I played like over 50 hours of WoW. And basically on Saturday, I had my match against Anatand. I played it. I finished it. And I just logged back into WoW <laughs> immediately. And then I played till like 3 a.m. Then the next day I played against Wham and I got destroyed. I was playing WoW until the match. And then I play against Wham, I got destroyed, and I just logged back into WoW. And Rekha's like, how did you do? And I was like, oh, I lost, but I'm still through. And she's like, are you going to play for next week? And I'm like, uh, I was like, well, I don't know, because my opponent is either B or Vortex, so that's going to be a tough match. And I was like, I'm not sure what to do, you know. And um, then we had an offer from two friends to go to, like, a Serbian uh, gaming event. Mm -hmm. And it was, um, I think it was Thursday, Friday. Or Friday, Saturday, one of those two. I think it was Friday, Saturday. And I didn't play on Saturday because I qualified for the playoffs. And the playoffs was a Sunday. So I was like, I told Mary, like, fuck it. Like, I'm not going to prepare in three days, four days. Like, these guys have been grinding for a while. So I was like, fuck it. Let's just go to Belgrade and let's have fun. So we did. And um, I didn't play, you know, Friday, Saturday. And then Sunday was my match. I warmed up. And... 
I was just thinking like what I'm going to play in WoW after. And <laughs> I played the match and I won the first game and I was like, okay, you know, I've won the second and I won the third. And I remember I, I walked in the other room and I just went like, what the fuck just happened? Like, I had no idea about the strategies or anything. I was just like, I'll just make units and see yeah. what happens. So I won 3-0. And, um, and Rick was like, how did you win? And I was like, I have no idea what just happened. I was like, I'm. this is like the most surprising result. Because it mm -hmm. wasn't like just a win. It was like very one-sided. So she was like, are you going to practice now? I was like, well, I got five days. Mm -hmm. And I mean, semi-final, so I might as well. So then I spent you know, five days streaming and I got like a few best of sevens against Louis. Uh, and it was funny because on Monday I played a best of seven against Louis and I lost 4-0. Oh. And then we played another one and I lost 4-1. And then the next day I won like 4-2 and then I it was just like four zeros after that. Man, so I, I was no like, wonder, okay, maybe I'll do that. <laughs> no wonder why Louis uh, became uh, such a good player, man. He's been practicing oh, with you a lot good. of hours, man. Uh, yeah, he he's very very good, and um, I always told him like I always tell him like if he keeps playing, he can be like a top three, top four player, top two, depending totally. depending how much time he spends. But yeah, totally. he's he's but very very good. I gotta say, I really enjoyed the match against B. Without getting into too much detail, uh, I really enjoyed the match against B. All of the games, and I feel you might have been told the, the same before, but you're commonly known as a defensive player rather than a more aggressive player. Yeah. Uh, but th in that match, man, you played it very aggressively. Even like, I, I think you were playing like, it was uh, JD versus o o OD. I mean, you're supposed to play aggressively, right? When playing OD. But mm -hmm. in general, throughout, the, like, throughout all, um, all of the matches, you played a more aggressive, you had a more aggressive play style. And I really enjoy that. And I've always thought to myself, um, when playing RTS, you kind of have to play aggressively because if you put pressure on your opponent, you're creating space for mistakes. Mm -hmm. And that's what I yep. saw in your games against B. So mm -hmm. maybe, I don't know if you, you've thought about this, but maybe it's time yeah. to change your place a little bit and give okay, it a little so, bit more. You see? <laughs> so so this is, a, this, okay, this is a, what I like to call fake news and myth. Okay. So <laughs> okay. Th this has been like a, a thing for a while. Like I'm more of a defensive player and I, I think it comes from me like last year. I would say before Golden League 2, I used to play like defense, like always 2TC, always like, let me get to the later stages. I never did feudal all lanes or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And my place, I would say since Golden League 2 has changed quite a lot. And I think part of it comes from that. And part of it comes from um the fact that i'm like very good defensively so people associate that with long games or he likes to defend it's just when people attack me i'm very good at setting up defense and defending so sometimes when i get a lead i know all i need to do is defend and the opponent has to attack or they will lose so the mm -hmm. games end with like me defending and them kind of mm -hmm. resetting their units so funnily enough, th th this has been going on obviously for like two years that I'm more defensive player and I've been telling people for a while, yes, this used to be a thing. And then when we check like average game time, I think it was in Gold Elite 2. Like 22 minutes? I had, was, or... I had faster average game time than Lucifron, who was like the guy that's extremely aggressive. And I even showed it to my stream and, and people were like, no way, because they thought I'm like... 15th out of 16 longest time and and then i show them i'm like guys like look at the game time like mm. and people are like but aren't your ladder games long and i open and it's like 12 minutes 14 minutes 16 12 minutes 14 minutes and i'm like i i know that's what you think but that's not the, you know that's not the truth so against b i was like i picked the aggressive sips mm -hmm. and uh i was part of it came from me being that aggressive was from I just didn't practice, so I didn't literally know how to do anything else. Um, and funny thing is, when I played against him in game one, Delhi versus Ayubid, I never saw that build before that he did, which is now the, the military wing into, yeah, fast, into castle. fast Castle. I thought like, oh, he's doing random shit. <laughs> I was like, I, I, you know, I saw the tower on gold and I saw military wing and I thought he's getting the blacksmith one. Because I was like, what the fuck is he doing? And I was like, I guess he's just playing weird. 
like he's just doing some goofy strat kind of thing. So I was like, what the fuck do I make? Because I, I didn't even scout that he's going fast castle. I just saw he reached castle. And I was like, what the fuck is he doing? <laughs> I didn't even see the desert raiders harassing me because I didn't even think that he's, you know, that's a thing. So I just thought he's like doing a random strat or like trolling or something. I don't know. So I was like, I guess I'll keep making units. So I win that game and I was like, my first thought after winning was like, okay, well, he just did a random strat. So like I got the win, but you know, the next game is probably going to do something more standard. So then later I found out after I finished the match that that's the meta with Ayubid. Mm -hmm. But because I've been playing WoW so much, <laughs> I didn't know that that's the thing at all. And it turns out that's a very strong build. I just had no clue about it. And it just happened that I played Delhi and I guess I responded correctly to it. But I thought he's just like, you know, because I was like, who's playing Ayubid on Dry Arabia? But later on, you know, we saw in the tournament Vortex and Lucifron played that strategy quite a lot. And, you know, Vortex mm -hmm. beat me with that strategy as well. But I was just like, who does this? Like, what is what is this? Like a military into fast castle? But, mm. how, uh, but yeah, it worked out. How do you see uh, we're getting, I, I don't know if you kind of feel tired already about the interview like we've been in this interview for i don't know how long but a very long time so we're getting mm. to the end okay I, i'm gonna release you soon um i just want to get your thoughts on w the game status right now like how do you find the game right now do you are you enjoying playing the game do you think uh there's future for the game because my next question is going to be what about stormgate um so right now i'm having a lot of fun playing the game uh genuinely i feel like the only two civs that i know how to play with like confidence is jean d'arc um and um like i know how to play japanese on on hybrid maps and i know how to play like jushi's legacy maybe mm -hmm. but like japanese on land byzantines ayubid and then um what was the last one I don't uh, know. Uh, I, I feel like I genuinely just don't have any... Oh, OTD. OD, OD. I just didn't experience uh, those civs yet fully, and I didn't practice them yet. So for me, even though I did a subathon and the game has been out for like a month, I feel like I still got so much to learn and to, to explore. Because, yeah, I play them, you know, but I, I don't feel like I understand them at all. Mm -hmm. And the only civs that I do understand are like the civs that are similar a lot more similar in build orders and play styles like Jean d'Arc or, mm -hmm. or Jushi's Legacy. So for me, it's very fun because there's a lot more to learn and figure out and all that. And, you know, for next tournament, um, depending when it is and if I'm playing it, it's like, then I got to decide which civs am I going to play, which civs I'm going to practice. So that's all cool and that's all fun. I think the game itself is in a pretty good state. Mm -hmm. um, I think considering we have 16 civilizations, the fact that like, we don't have a sim with 70% win rate is insane to me. Well, when JD is you... close enough. 63, right. 62%. No, 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 no. That's because you Wait, play what? it. And that's because you don't want to hear the truth. Uh, I mean, even if it gets nerfed, you know, now I got plenty of sims to, um, plenty of sims to work with. But um, I think... You know, I'm I'm releasing like video guys now how to counter JD and mm -hmm. people already told me in the chat like even just watching the video and understanding a bit more how to counter it, they're like, Oh, I'm winning games now and I think a lot of it comes from new saves and people don't know how to play against it. Mm -hmm. And then J D while being strong is like if you don't know how to deal with it, it's awful. <laughs> it reminds yeah. me of like a Mongol Tower Rush from back in the day. Mm. Like, if you didn't know what to do, the tower goes up and then your stuff is just blocked. And then you just lose villagers everywhere, right? And um, I think as the time goes, people will do better and better. And um, I think there's like a sim for everyone. And hopefully in the future, you know, uh, in 2024, we get like more variant sims. What do you, um, what do you expect to see? If you had I mean, to say lot, two like, sims that you would like to see in the game, two new sims for, for next year, which... Um, I would I would love to see like Vikings and Aztecs. Yeah, I would love um, to see Aztecs, man. Yeah, I, I think that'd be I think that'd be great to just because I feel like they would be different. Mm -hmm. um, like I don't want to see another sieve that's like oh this is like another European sieve, but mm. it's like similar to what we have. Like I I don't care. I just want just new sieves. You mm -hmm. know, I just Completely want it to be wild. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I like since the variants 
Sid started, I, I would expect them to do English, Mongol, Delhi, and Rus variant, because that would make sense. And then next year, or 2025, then they would have to do like Ottoman, Malian, Byzantine, Japanese variants. If that's that's what they're going with. But um, in a way, I, I kind of hope that they don't release six sieves again. I, I wish they would do like um, a release in April. Yeah, yeah, like April release like two variant sieves or something like that because there's just so much info and so much stuff to learn all of a sudden that um, hmm. kind of a bit overwhelming. Um, regarding Stormgate... Um, a lot of people are like scared and worried, you know, like are it's gonna take all the player base and I feel like um just because the game is from the same genre doesn't mean it's a threat to an existing game. Like mm -hmm. no one I haven't seen one post people saying, yo, Counter Strike two is coming out, is AoE four gonna die? No one's saying that, even though Counter Strike two is a way bigger game than any of the RTS games. You know, no one's saying, yo, League of Legends is dropping a new patch, is it gonna kill AoE four? They're just saying this for Stormgate or whatever other RTS game because it's in the same genre. So people just assume, oh, it's an RTS. So that means that people are going to play it. Um, I mean, it, I is, it is a free. To, it is going to be a free to play game. Yeah. It is a game with only three civilizations or races. It mm -hmm. is a game. Uh, I don't know, man, like easier to understand, I would say, although it might not be in the end mechanically that easy because it's going to be somehow like StarCraft 2, probably. Uh, but, you know, in the eyes of someone who wants to like give it, give it RTS a try or someone who's yeah. just like doesn't want to bother learning all of the new saves and everything because we're we're sitting on 16 saves, but they will release more. And the more saves they release, the more complicated complicated the game is going to become. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the thing about the thing is, like, in order to enjoy A4, I don't think you need to know everything. Mm -hmm. That's a bit of a misconception, I think, for RTS games. It's And that's why a lot of people don't like to play them, because they see, like, oh, you have 16 civs, so I need to know everything before I start playing. It's mm -hmm. like, no, you can, you can play an FFA, you know, you can play a 4v4, you can do a campaign, and you don't need to learn, or learn everything like it's a exam, you know, mm -hmm. you can just learn through playing, and you can kind of like what I like to call like passive learning, mm -hmm. like where you don't actually actively like, oh, what does this do? What does this do? Because it's easy to overwhelm yourself with information and lose interest. I think people should just play the game, literally. Um, you don't need to jump into one on one immediately. You can do other stuff, you know, get a friend. Maybe they can teach you a little bit. But I think that um, Stormgate is a lot bigger threat to StarCraft 2 than it is to any I mean, AoE game. I mean, StarCraft because... 2, I don't want to say it's a dead game because I might get killed. But, I mean, StarCraft 2 is a very old game. I, I don't know why they didn't, like, never released a StarCraft 3 game. Like, it was such a good game, StarCraft 2. Why why didn't they release a, a third uh, series? Because Blizzard is not Blizzard anymore. Ah, yeah, yeah, they, yeah. they just that care about microtransaction yeah. and yeah. money, and it's hard to monetize yeah. RTS games. So they just hmm. gave yeah. up on that. Totally, totally. Um, Blizzard died years ago. So mm. know, they died. About, Diablo 2 and StarCraft 2. Diablo 2 and StarCraft 2 were the last good Blizzard games. After that, Blizzard, yeah. as, like the Blizzard that we knew before Warcraft 3 Blizzard, the Stark of 2 Blizzard. Yeah, it's died. gone a long time ago. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know a lot of employees that, that just left a long time ago and like this was even known in Starcraft 2 the lid, like mm. Blizzard's dead a long time ago. Mm. Um, I remember when I was in Starcraft 2, you would just hear like, oh, this person that was in charge of the tournaments is no longer working for Blizzard. Oh, this person that's in charge to work with ESL is no longer working for Blizzard. Oh, this person that did the balancing is no longer working for yeah. Blizzard. And you kind of knew behind the scenes like that's it. Like, it's just going to slow down. But the thing is about, like, Stormgate is uh, they're probably going to have a good game. They're going to have a successful game. It's free to play. A lot of people will play it. But it's, yes, it's an RTS. But I would say it's, like, a different genre to AoE. It is. It's, it is a different one. It's not, like, the fact is Stormgate is a way bigger threat to StarCraft 2 than it is for AoE 4 because the games play completely differently. Mm -hmm. Like, the person that likes AoE 4 is not going to say, oh my god, the Stormgate is a new RTS, I'm going to love it. You might, right? You might. But if you're enjoying AoE 4 or AoE 2 or AoE 3, 
you have a lot higher chance to enjoy like if you're AoE 2 player you have a way higher chance of enjoying AoE 4 than you have enjoying Stormgate just because it's a different type of game and mm -hmm. from my personal experience and just you know watching the the show matches they did recently at Dreamhack Atlanta it's it's a fast paced game mm -hmm. like they it seems that the games are like you know 5 10 minute stops boom quick in and out you know you know next map it's very similar to StarCraft too in that sense and it's very much impactful um, you know, they, they did reduce, like, the, the damage that units are doing, but it's very much meant to be played fast. It's meant to, you know, you go in and you can do five, six, seven, eight games in an hour. Mm -hmm. And that's not necessarily what AoE 4 players enjoy, uh, I would say. Some, again, some might do, mm -hmm. but I don't really see Stormgate as a direct competitor for AoE 4. Don't and... you? Yep, there, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I, I don't, so I know that, um, obviously I know a lot more, you know, behind the scenes that, that, you know, some people, some other people, but, uh, I do know that from AOE 4, there will be pro players. There will be, you know, um, casters, terminal organizers, whoever that will try Stormgate, that will try do something in Stormgate. Um, but a lot of the people are kind of like, yeah, I'll try it out, you know? And, and yeah, it's a new game. Why wouldn't you try it out? It's free to play. Mm -hmm. Maybe you like it. Maybe you don't. Mm -hmm. um but they're not seeing it as like yeah this is gonna save me kind of yeah. thing like yeah i can't wait for it whereas in starcraft and i know this for a while uh there were plans over six months ago of people fully switching to stormgate not not doing content and like i'll try it out but like they have tournaments planned they they've talked to you know like other organizers to do content together to to co-stream to organize tournaments to cast together or pro, there's a lot of pro players that are done with StarCraft 2 and they're mm -hmm. just playing it. It's like a, um, they call it like Stormgate waiting room. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there's a lot of players in StarCraft 2 and just community figures in StarCraft 2 like that, that are looking to switch to it, not just to try it out, but to switch to it. And it's one of those, it kind of feels like even if I don't necessarily like it, if it does well, I'll stick with it. If, um, so is it safe to assume that you are not going to switch or as of right now if mm -hmm. aoe 4 keeps getting like support as in from like microsoft tournament wise if there are tournaments if um the game is being developed actively what i mean by that is like we can expect new civs i am like 95 percent staying with AoE 4 mm -hmm. i you know th there was a point where i was like yeah i'll try it out and if i like it i'll, I'll switch like if I really like it and I don't like AoE 4. But these days to me, it like not only business wise, it makes more sense to stay with AoE 4, but also totally. I just enjoy the, the game. Like I, I realized I had fun playing Stormgate. Um, I just don't see myself doing it for work, mm -hmm. which doesn't mean I'm not going to play it. Yeah. Right. Uh, that doesn't mean that. I mean, how um, much how much time do you have left after AoE four? Then WoW, then Rebecca, and then right, like, right, right. When are I you mean, gonna? Maybe, maybe when I'll are you gonna WoW play Storm? Play Storm yeah. No, you're not gonna do that. A hundred percent, you're not gonna do that. So yeah, I think that you know I'll probably play it. Mm -hmm. uh, I might stream it sometimes, but mm -hmm. it's okay. it's a completely new game, and you know I I am getting old, right? And that game is very much made to be like. You know, micro, Wait, micro, engage, your... engage, game oh. over, go next. And Hold on, your your, your girlfriend's cool. name's not Rebecca? No, no, it's Marika. Oh, Marika. Man, I've always thought it was Rebecca. Oh, my God. Oh, my. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Fun, uh, and I, mean, I think, I, I think I've said it a couple times always, in the interview. Yeah, she always goes by when. Uh, yeah, people, wife, wife. People don't wrong, but yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah, I, I'm sure I'll play it. It's just, I'm about to turn uh, 33. Actually, my birthday is on 29th, so mm -hmm. not tomorrow in two days i guess it's past midnight so tomorrow um and it's like when i'm 34 35 do i want to play this game that's like boom 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 and it's over go next I, I don't know if i actually have the the you know the brain capacity to do that like i'm gonna get older and older yeah. so i'm gonna get any easier so yeah it's kind of how okay. it goes well busy my man i think we're coming to an end after i, I think we've been like like an hour and a half or close to two hours interview man this was by far the longest interview i've ever had and let me tell you man i can't feel more grateful and more thankful and happy to have had this interview with you man it's been 
such a good time here like spending this time with you was was amazing thank you for opening uh yourself to everybody here in the chat uh telling stories about your past life like I, you actually went through every single step like man you didn't miss a single step th uh, of your life and that I, was i like to delay my amazing. interviews like my games you know so it was <laughs> <laughs> play, playing a defensive interview <laughs> right all right macro macro storytelling 10 out of 10 right there no honestly man like Honestly, it's been I, I can I can say it's the, been the best interview I've ever ever done, and I've done a much. few, maybe not so much, not not so many on the AOE four scene, but I've done interviews. You know, uh, back then when I used to work in finance, a lot of shit, and this one man has been fun, has been easy to, I don't know, man, it was it was amazing. So thank you very very much. I hope you had uh, as much fun as I did, and I hope everyone uh, did too. And man. Again, congratulations on your last win. Congratulations on uh, on this last year. I, I feel you're in your like prime time now, like your prime stage. And I hope that goes on forever, man, because it's lovely to see you live every fucking day and, and get to see your content, man. So again, thank you in my name and name of the chat and everyone out there who plays at OE4. Thank you for everything that you do for the community. And thank, thank you, you for so being much. here with us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for all the kind words. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I had a lot of fun during the interview. Uh, you know, when uh, when you're having fun, time passes by really, really it fast. It really so flies. Don't worry uh, that, that like it went longer. I had a lot of fun and uh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I hope people enjoyed it as well. And um, yeah, that's it. I mean, we keep going with AV4. We keep having fun. There's plenty of content to go around. So I'm looking forward to it. Thank you again. Thank you very much. We see you tomorrow. Okay. Have a great one. Bye-bye, man. Peace.